Okay, so what I'm going to be demo, uh, demoing today is um, how to do that saran wrap setup. And I've mixed up uh, ultramarine blue with a little bit of, a um, little bit dirty in there. Um, I wanted a cleaner blue than that, didn't I? Let me make a cleaner blue. I'll turn that into green. So um, I'm going to add sap green to the ultramarine blue to make a dark green. Okay, and then I need a little bit of ultramarine blue in the brown. And what I didn't bring with me to here, because I didn't know I was going to do this, is my mic. So the sound might not be quite as good to remind myself to talk louder. When I do it by myself, you know, you're sitting there doing this uh, recording with nobody watching, <laughs> talking to the wall. And... Uh, oh, your kitty. My kitty, yes. Sometimes the kitty comes and helps. Kitty was... Uh, I did a... I've been doing a yoga class on Friday mornings, and this last time the kitty came over to help with the yoga class. And she found my iPad on the floor with the instructor doing the yoga stuff. So then she was like, what's going on? So she sticks her nose right into it. So there's this picture of kitty eyes and nose. Oh. <laughs> but that was funny. She couldn't figure out where that noise was coming from and why there was movement on that screen. So I need to get some big puddles of color because when I put it on here, I need to have it relatively wet. If it's not relatively wet, then the saran wrap won't do what it needs to do. So we're just gonna do some color patches here. And, and you want it dark, uh, not super light. If it's really light color, you won't see much with the saran wrap either. So that's why I'm making the sky maybe a little bit darker than what it is. And I'm not going to bother putting that tree in early like I did the last time because the saran wrap moved it around more than I liked. And now when I bring this next color up to here, if I just touch it onto that blue, it's going to bleed into there a little bit and sort of move in there nicely. And then I'm going to bring that all the way down. And let's get a little new gamboge in this yellow too. All the way up into this corner. All that dark stuff is going to go on top of there, so it's okay. And that can even come down and into here a little further. And there's some red down in here that's sort of pretty too. Let's just get some pieces of red in there. When I go to put the saran wrap on, it's gonna change things. And so um, I know it's gonna shift stuff around. I gotta keep moving because I don't wanna have this dry on me. Uh, and then there's a lot of green over in here. So two, there was two things I wanted you guys to see on this. One is that when you have relatively thick paint and you paint it next to another area of relatively thick paint and it's wet, it will move into it but it won't run into it. So you get these, you can probably mm -hmm. see there's some really nice pretty little bleeds in there. So if it was wet into wet, then it would be running in there. Exactly, it would be just roaring into there. And um, depending on how wet you have, you know, uh, how thick you've got this paint, depends on how much it actually moves into there. And I'm feeling like we need some brown into here still. Let's... And I need to stop painting here real soon because it's already starting to dry up in that top up there. Looking at it sideways, I can see that the sheen's coming off, and I want to still have good sheen on here when I put the uh, saran wrap down. So if it's wet, okay, so you put it down and it's wrinkled. <clears throat> okay. Yes, 
put it down wrinkled because you want the wrinkles. Mm -hmm. That's that's what gives the fun to it is the wrinkles. And um, I remember we did one of these in the beginning classes last year. Yeah, we probably did. I was probably showing you salt and this yeah. and yeah. Um, it's a. I use it probably a little more often on texture on things like rocks. On what? On rocks. Oh. Okay. Uh, but it can be really interesting in plant matter. So I can get little bits. I'm doing like I still want some stuff down in here. I'm just get a little more paint down in here. This is already dried. Is that that permanent? Uh, is that? Yeah, that's permanent brown. We didn't have that yesterday, but I had a, I had another brown. But that was the one that I and I mixed it with uh, burnt sienna and a little permanent rose. Yes. Then I put, then I put uh, ultra green blue. Oh, I'm gonna tell you that's got the dark brown. Well, I have Van Dyke brown, but that's probably too dark, right? Uh, you can start with that and then add other colors to it. That's a little more of a dark neutral brown. Yeah. And so you might find you want to add a little bit of, of, of quinacridone rose to it or a little bit of yellow to it to, to liven it up. So now I have to leave this to dry. So as you can see where the, it was wet, and where, the, where it's attached. It, it attached. Ah. That's where you're going to get dark spaces, and then you get the light spaces where it's not attached. So you can sort of nice. see how that is down. Mm -hmm. And so you can play with it to a certain extent to get some texture and some uh, sort of shape and line to it. But as you can see, it's a little tricky to keep it wet enough so that you can really, because it's got to be wet or else it doesn't stick to it. So then I'll just let that dry. And so that has to totally dry before I do anything to it. So it's just going to have to sit here and dry. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Oh, let's do this. Let's you guys bring it up. I, it